Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. And today's show brought to you by our good friends at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15, almost warp online at sunburymotors.com. Ford, Kia, Hyundai, best in new inventory. Great selection of pre-owned inventory with the all-important Sunbury Motors guarantee. Great sales staff. Your trade-in's never been worth more in a fabulous service department. It really is one-stop vehicle shopping. Inspections, routine, diagnostics, they handle it all at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors, Kia, Routes 11 and 15, Hummel's Wharf, and online at sunburymotors.com. The Sixers have acquired James Harden from the Nets for Ben Simmons. Uh, fortunately, we have been able to look into the uh, uh, Sunbury Broadcasting crystal ball. This is Doc Rivers and the Sixers' front office as they get close to a playoff exit because of Harden. Is there anyone there? Yes, what do you see? Iceberg, run right ahead! Thank you. Just, I, it's just, you know. No, senor! No, senor! No, senor! I'm just telling you. <laughs> hey, Doc sounds a little panicked. Put it down! <laughs> oh, no, but... I tell you right now, the iceberg kind of looks like Giannis Antetokounmpo. <laughs> rather, rather imposing. At this point, okay. I, I, I believe at this point, okay. Joel Embiid's trying to find a lifeboat. <laughs> now they're going to back up. Hoping to give Harden back. Here we go. Come on. Get that engine going. Come on. <laughs> it's really dramatic. I mean, I'm it telling is. you right now, this is stuff that Woj would not do. <laughs> okay? Hey. I'll tell you, I don't know why they're not turning. We got James Harden. He's got the ball. He won't turn. <laughs> But Embiid's open. He's to the left of the iceberg. Dog on hard and won't give up the ball. I mean, listen to Doc. He sounds desperate. Hey. <laughs> Get rid of the ball. Yes, yes. Harden's going to give up the ball. He's going to the hand. The playoff exit's over. Jesus Christ! <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Doc looks over at Daryl Morey and he says, Smell ice, can you? F O U L E D, that spells out. Well, Harden will draw a lot of those. Okay, you will see a lot of free throws. Harden is very good at drawing them and getting to the line. <laughs> you enjoyed that segment, didn't you? I kind of did, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Courtesy of the movie 1997 Titanic, James Cameron, executive producer. All right. Our play by play call the deck. Three point game still. Houston's got a chance for the tie. Edwards, he is fouled. Is it in the act of shooting for the three? Let's see. The officials have to confer. Kyler Edwards was attempting to go up. He was fouled. If it is, it's three free throws. It is. Initially, they're thinking it's on the floor, but now they're going to say three shots. Kyler Edwards. Oh. 
Five for eight from the free throw line now for Edwards. Graham off to the side. See if White yep. can sneak around in there. And he left early. And he hit the rim that time, yeah. but he left early. Yeah. He'd have the ball underneath their own basket here. He's going to make multiple cuts here. It's touched on the run and a whistle. The ball is not going to bounce. Let's see. There should be time remaining. Or that. That's it. SMU has done it. 85 to 83, knocking off Houston for their first conference loss of the season. And only the third overall this year. Two point win for the Mustangs, and they've won 14 straight at home. Great win for SMU. Oh, SMU. Uh, so Dick Girardi and I would have handled it differently. I would have said, Dick, Houston is and he, gone. All right, there we go. Now we're going to get to the part where Matt the Greek is going to sit there and he's going to listen because we're going to do a segment on gambling. What a day. Well, yeah, the King's going to be on a little bit later. That's just the icing on the cake right there. We had Ross Tucker today. They made a trade where they took really a guy that Dever's going to play for you and at least got somebody who will play for you, albeit it won't be as smooth as you think. <laughs> well, I'd say this, Daryl Morey loves James Harden. you got to, you got to give him credit. He loves that guy. And uh, But now we're going to get to the gambling part. Because in the final segment, it's going to be a lot on prop bets. And uh, you know how much I deeply care about that segment. Yes, I do. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate me on that segment? A uh, zero. <laughs> <laughs> very fair. <laughs> very, very fair. All right. So let's get Brandon Lang, of course, immortalized in the movie. Matthew McGonaghy played him. Uh, I know Matt, in his, you know, he's already requested Matthew McGonaghy to play him. In the Matt Catrillo story, uh, which is great, I believe at least is going to be portrayed by I believe by Jennifer Garner. I believe um, the suit is going to be played by Curly Howard from the Three Stooges. Um, so what? No, did I get that wrong? <laughs> Here's Brandon Lake. Brandon, welcome. That's mighty nice of you to say that. I appreciate that. I mean, I feel I feel pretty good for. For about to turn 59 years old and been in the gym for the last year, and I, I look pretty darn good. Yeah, now. Good, I get there you go. I love it. You know, you know Matt, Matt's always going to look better than me. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, it's, 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 I listen. It, it, it's helped me meet quite a few girls when I can walk into a bar and and say, "Hey, look at a picture of me and Matt," and and kind of take it from there. So it's good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> See, you're playing it right. Well done with the cards. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You. You're doing well with that. Um, before I get to the, the game itself and and, and betting, uh, I do have to ask you, what was it like having yourself portrayed on film? What was that experience like and to see it then play out in front of you like that? Pretty crazy. Um, you know, I was a little pissed off at the beginning of the movie when – the kid is shooting the basket with the dad drinking the beer. Yeah. And Hollywood casted a kid that couldn't shoot a basketball. <laughs> Not the, good. The kid, the kid looked like he couldn't play dead in the Western. Right. Um, can you at least get a kid that can shoot the basketball and put a net on the rim? I'd have been a little more happy with that. But uh, listen, at the end of the day, if, if, if you go to Hollywood with an idea for a movie and you take a job at a golf course with a caddy to network that movie, and it to land Matthew McConaughey. It's just, uh, it, it's it's crazy. And Matt did a tremendous job. I have no, no, no disappointment at all on how he portrayed how he portrayed me and the, the the pressure of the business. All right. So now one more question on that: the really good actors will do extensive research on either the character, the subject, or both. Is that what Matthew McConaughey gave you? Um. Yes and no. Dan Dan did such a great job in the script for, for five months 
I would go to Dan's office and I would lay down on his couch and he would press record and then I would just talk for for hours. Right. So he was able to then take that and write if you if you if you watch the movie and listen to the dialogue of the movie, the dialogue is tremendous. It really is. And yeah. Dan just did a great job of capturing basically what the essence of, of what I was, who I was, and the pressure of the business. He just did a wonderful job of of hammering that home. And and um, I watch the movie now, and I don't so much listen to the acting, but I listen to the dialogue. Yeah. The, the, ga- the Gambler's Anonymous scene. The dialogue in The Gambler's Anonymous scene by Pacino. Yeah. Is legitimately unbelievable. Yeah. Like it's some of the best dialogue you'll you'll ever see. It's it's pretty darn impressive. What, what makes it what makes it though impressive is that is how it is. That's what makes it impressive. The reality yeah. of it. Yeah. It's it's uh we're all lemons, you don't you don't feel as alive yeah. when they're you know, putting the chips down but when they're raking them away. I mean that that just it's I laugh. I I, I laugh that scene all the time. It's just so so tremendous. So it's been 17 years. Got to put my mom on the red carpet in Hollywood. Perfect. Enjoy that moment with her. Perfect. And, and to be on the red carpet and see her son on the red carpet and, and put her in Hollywood, that was, you know, when your mother hugs you on the red carpet and says to you, you've made all my dreams come true. What does a son do after that? What does a son, there's nothing you can do when you get that kind of place from your mom. What an incredible moment. Uh, you feel like every day of your life paid off in that moment for her. That's awesome. Yep. Yep, absolutely. What got you into this? I mean, we all make decisions. We all make decisions as to the profession we go into. So what was it about this? What was the lure? What made it? What has made it work for you? I did parlay cards in high school and then parlay cards in the Navy. And then when I got out of the Navy, my mom moved to Vegas in 1982. And I got out of the Navy and moved there in 87. And I just was hanging out at the Stardust and was a cast of characters that would hanging out of the back of the Stargust, and everybody always asks somebody, who you like? You got one for me? But I kind of just gave a guy a game. And then the next day, day I'd be there, and the same guy came up and said, you got one for me? And I think over a three-week period, I went like, I don't know, 17 and three? <laughs> so, more, so, so, so more guys are coming up and asking for my opinion, and more guys are coming up, and then uh, then I got my job at the Nevada Sports Schedule, which Jim Feist was was running, and then I remember Jim. I took I, I took over some 900 numbers there, and, and, and started doing some 900 numbers for him, and and then uh, the Gary Austin Hotline was gonna was gonna be yep. disconnected at the end of the month, and I I took it over for a month, and I did what's called a cross plug, where if you called Chip Trimbus and Larry Ness and Jim Feist 900 number. Before you got to their picks, I said, "Listen, go over to Gary Austin for his game of the year." Well, that game of the year went like fifteen and four the last nineteen days. Mm. And what happened was everybody stopped calling Chip, Jim, and Larry, and they're all calling Gary. Right. So when Feist looked at the numbers at the end of the month, he's like, "How did this number get all the get all the money?" And I'm like, "Well, I went I went like fifteen and four on the number, Jim, and then whatever." And then that's when the Pacino character heard about me and and, and brought me to New York and the rest is history. All right, so let's take a game like this this weekend. All right, so okay. Cincinnati and the Rams. All right. You want to make sure that, you know, when you're talking to somebody, you give, you're, you're giving them the best shot on whatever. So they understand. Yep. So they understand what the deal is. What kind of research yep. do you do to make that happen? So I'm, I'm known for the Super Bowl. Um, I've been in this business for 31 years. That's right. I'm, I'm 25 and 4. Yep. There's been two. There's been two ties. The Patriots and Packers, mm-hmm. 35-21. Line was 14. Yep. Tennessee Rams. Line was 7-23-16. Other than that, I'm 25 and four. Going into last year's Super Bowl, I had reeled off six in a row. Yeah. And I got fooled by thinking Andy Reid would know his offensive line is weak, be more creative in moving the pocket. In creating space for Mahomes to throw that whether he was distracted by his son and the off ramp and, and, and so right. on and so forth mm-hmm. he did none of that he just said I think my offensive line is going to be okay well guess what Andy they weren't and they were completely overpowered by the Tampa Bay defensive front didn't matter if you had five Tyree kills across the board All right. Mahomes had no time to throw it didn't they, matter. They, back they, the, they couldn't handle JPP or Shaq Barrett you know, it's, no, and that. So, and so now Go back to the Carolina Denver Super Bowl. Yep. 
go back to the both Super Bowl Giants wins over the Patriots. Yep. All those three games that I just gave you was a defensive front that controlled the game right. and controlled the victory. Now, if both Giants wins over the Patriots, if Denver's win over Carolina, if those D-line dominance on a scale of 1-10 to 10 were a 7, what you're going to see on Sunday is a 12. You yeah. have the number one defensive yep. line in the NFL that gets pressure in 2.8 seconds. That means yep. Burrow has got to drop back, die check, and get it out, or he's going to get sacked. You have the second worst offensive line in the NFL trying to block <laughs> this guy. So everybody's like, well, they, they did well against Tennessee, and he figured out a way to beat Tennessee, and he sacked nine times. No. Let, let's make sure we're clear here. Right. The Cincinnati Bengals did not beat the Tennessee Titans. I know you want to say they beat him. They didn't. Well, Ryan Tannehill no. lost to yes. the Cincinnati Bengals. That's right. That, there's no other way to say it. Now, yeah. Kansas City, listen, I don't know what happened in that locker room at halftime. I don't know. I've got reports here at Radio Row that Eric Bieniemy and Mahomes went at it, and Andy Reid had to separate them. And then Eric Bieniemy got mad at Andy Reid because he wanted to kick the field goal with five seconds to go, and, and, and Andy Reid said, no, let's give him one more play. And that whole energy of that flare-up, carried right over into the second half where they just went the same team. Yep. I, listen, I never thought the Chiefs were a great team to begin with. Their winning streak in the middle of the year was against all losing teams. That's true. So I didn't think they so, – so what happened is the team that should be here in the Super Bowl is the Buffalo Bills, and that's a crying shame. Because if Cincinnati would have had to go to Buffalo, Buffalo would have blew the doors off. Yeah. Well, but instead it, we got Cincinnati. They're here, and now we're handicapping the Bengals versus the Rams. And in my opinion – Last year, I made the mistake of thinking the KC offensive line could hold up, no. and I got my butt handed to me. No. I'm not going to make that same mistake twice. It's interesting that you bring this up uh, because Zach can, could verify this. I've said this all week. I said, I'll, I'll look at units, and I don't mean offensive unit, defensive unit. And I'm talking about units, and the best unit on the field, in my opinion, as I've said all week, is the Rams defensive front, and the worst yep. unit on the field – for both teams is the Bengals offensive front. Absolutely. I mean, I've said that all Absolutely. week, Brandon. All week I've said that. Very rarely in the Super Bowl do you get the absolute strength of one team goes into the absolute weakness of the other. And when you have that big a mismatch, the line don't matter. Let's talk about the line for a minute. There's been 55 Super Bowls. Yep. The straight up winner is 44 and 11 against the spread. Right. So there's a very good chance that the team that wins this game is going to cover the number. And so, in my opinion, you lose with the Rams before you try to win with Cincinnati. It's been a great run. Joe Burrow's for president, governor, you name it. The whole yeah. world's in love with Joe. Everybody's to marry Joe. Even guys want to marry Joe. Good for you, Joe. I get it. You've had a great run. <laughs> but at the end of the day, in my opinion, I'm not going to make the same mistake. I double Aaron Donald. Von Miller's going to have a massive game. Boy, you know, Lloyd's going to have a massive game. You know, Gaines is going to have a massive game. I don't think people realize. And I've had people say, well, they weren't very good against the Niners. The Niners have a top three offensive the, the line. The Niners' the offensive line is terrific. It, I mean, it, terrific. Yeah. Terrific. So, you know what this game's going to be a lot like? It's going to be like, like the first playoff game for the Rams, Arizona game. Yeah, Where they just I, I agree with Kyler that. Murray. I agree. Yeah. I, that was that was like watching Hawaii Five O standing on the beach yeah, right, yeah. as the tidal wave came at you. Yeah, I mean that's that's how I looked at. It. Look, I mean, uh, uh, do you delve into any prop stuff at all, or do you just like yeah, to I stick gotta, with the game? So what's your, what's your I got a couple. What's your best props? Uh, Matthew Stafford over five and a half rush yards. That's one scramble. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, um, good enough for one. I yeah. like. Rams sacks three and a half. Love the over. Oh, absolutely. No, I, I, I'm with you. Absolutely. Total over. sacks for the game five and a half. Going to go over there. Mm-hmm. And then the last one I like is first score of the game field goal plus one thirty. Yeah. Uh, by the way, sacks the five and a half number. That might be the Rams number. I agree. All right. Before we I even get to Cincinnati. Are. Before we even get to Cincinnati. Yeah. I agree. Uh, Fun conversation. Uh, fascinating topic. Uh, look, uh, just very quickly, I know, you know Vegas has always had action. You've always had action. You've done this for a long period of time. When they opened up, uh, when the New Jersey case was won, did that change the dynamics for you at all in any way? Oh, absolutely. It boosted my business 80%. 
Wow. Couldn't have been more, couldn't have been more happy. So I just, I just boosted, boosted my business 80%. You know, Thank Martin Luther King said it best. Free at last, free at last. <laughs> so to God Almighty, we free at last. 30 states and District of Columbia now have it. All Absolutely. Right, so there you go. Uh, I hope this is not the last time we have you on the show because I thought this was an awesome segment. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I'll come on whenever you want me. Thanks so much, Brandon. Okay, brother. Brandon Lang joining us from Radio Row at the Convention Center in Los Angeles. Matt, who normally zones out during most segments I do, was absolutely attentive during all of that. (laughs) Got to get the kids to college somehow. (laughs) <laughs> Got to start the game plan. To get your kids to college. Oh, yeah. Luke knows a lot. Actually, Luke knows all of his letters already. Really? He does. He's doing really well. Shocked me. Well, no, I was uh, the other day, you know, I was, you know, I saw him and I said, you know, I said, what What are your three favorite letters? What are daddy's least favorite letters? I said, what are daddy's least favorite letters? And he, he took out an I and an R and an S. All right, we'll come back with more in a moment. <laughs> As we continue on News Radio 1070 WK, okay? F O U L E D, that spells Falta. Taking your calls at 800 795 9565. This is The Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. And then I looked over at little Luke and I said, Are there any other letters that make daddy sweat? And he said, Well, Uncle Steve, F B I. <laughs> this kid's a whiz. <laughs> He's something else. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I said, anything else? And he put out a C, I, and an A. <laughs> like, I'm thinking, wow. That's got quite a background. <laughs> he worries about a lot, doesn't he? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's amazing how the kids pick up on it. All right. Uh, today's show brought to you by <laughs> Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Kia Routes 11 and 15, almost wharf online at sunburymotors.com. <laughs> yeah, I, I checked. I know we're going to the king here in a moment. But it's going to be, what, near 50 here tomorrow? Yeah, exactly at 50 <laughs> tomorrow here, at least. <laughs> I checked Minneapolis because that's that's where I'm flying to tomorrow night. Oh yeah, it was like five for the high and below like negative twelve, right? Nine below zero. Ah, I'm like what? <laughs> Couldn't play Florida State, Miami, Georgia Tech, something. <laughs> was this their plan? Have you guys come out so that you, they can freeze you out first, and then they'll actually reschedule this game, the home game? We- we had a we had a player years ago, Milos Bogatic, okay, from Yugoslavia, and he said he says to Dick Girardi, "We're bringing the king in here, King. Come on in. You can listen to this. How you doing? You all right? What? There you are. There he is, the king. Hi. How are you? Good. So we've got this player, Milos Bogatic, from Yugoslavia. So this is a two prong story." So, Dick, so he tells Dick Girardi and me, I am the Larry Bird of my country. <laughs> of course, Dick and I look at you like, okay. <laughs> Whatever you say. So he was in the starting lineup that night. And you know how Dick and I play off of each other. And I said, and Milos Bogatic, the 6'9 freshman from, and he says, French Lick, Yugoslavia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then we go to Minnesota, and it was – we were going to shoot around. I think it was 12 degrees. And he comes out in his uniform. In his uniform. Okay, I didn't mean he comes out like the, the uniforms underneath. He comes out in his uniform. And he looks over at Dick and me, and he says, Memo to Milos, 
Next time, wear long pants, Minnesota. <laughs> go on, go on. I feel like we can't make this guy up. <laughs> Get the lingerie on the deck. Call the janitor. I probably should write a book. I... You really should, honestly. <laughs> I probably should. That's amazing. <laughs> did, did, did nobody, like, tell him, like, dude, it's going to be cold? All right. I can tell you in no uncertain terms that somebody who knew Milos, he'd have done the same thing whether you told him or not. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay. We'll leave it right. at that. Great guy, but oh well. And how's the life of the king right now? All right, now I'm sitting on the basement steps in Studio 7 at Enfield. So. Oh, I've, not, I've sat on those steps before. All right. Well, they're gray now. They're totally painted. We got a rug coming in the basement. We got a perfect. Oh yeah, it's just perfect. I'll tell you what, Steve. So that I was telling Matt. Oh, sidebar. You know Matt's an Eagle Scout. Yes, I do. I, I do, as a matter of fact, and that's one of the reasons I didn't know why. That. I, I think that's, that's unbelievably one, cool. That's one, so, that's one of the reasons. That's uh, one of the reasons why um, his son Luke uh, uh, spelled out FBI. All right, so go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so anyway, whatever. It's, we take one step forward and two steps back here. It's really, really, we've dumped a fortune in the place. You know, I went to plug in something like a month ago, yeah, and there were no three-prong outlets. There are all two-prong outlets. I'm yeah, like, in the house, yeah, that's all there are in the you house. Know? Yeah. Well, yeah I mean, the first now, place I would, you know. Yeah, I would think the first place that they, they even possibly could have been would have been upstairs, All right? Because that oh, was they were was definitely a... upstairs in the bedroom. Yeah, they, there yeah. was one in the dining room. Um, uh-huh. No ground faults, no ground. So we had to have ground faults put in the bathroom, the kitchen, two in the kitchen, mm. um, in the basement by the washing machine. Yeah, because the air conditioner like was you know, the air conditioner. You think everything is simple, and before you know yeah. it, you're fifteen hundred dollars into it. You right. know. Yeah, yeah, the air because the air conditioner was in the dining room. What? Yeah, the air conditioner was in the dining room, so you had to, had to have a three prong there. Uh. Yes, there was one underneath it. So See, no, well, there is like, now. Yeah, we put one yeah, in. Yeah. I think she ran a cord to the. It was oh, one on the middle wall. So okay, whatever. It, See, there I, were not I in remember the my own house. Not in the living room. <laughs> I um, remember my own house. <laughs> I'm telling you, you should see our bedrooms upstairs. They're white now. So, oh, good, perfect. What a project! It, the, the paint paneling. I mean, it, I've enjoyed a lot of it because I've learned a lot. But paint paneling, you got to prime it. And you got to fill all the. Remember, my room had those little round things. On the mm-hmm. paneling, mm-hmm. those round circles, all yep. those had to be spackled and gone. There were 600 of them. <laughs> like, you got to be kidding wow. me, you know? But it worked, and we sanded it down, and the upstairs is completely done. Second Good. floor. Beautiful. Uh, and the uh, eaves are all cleaned out, everything's done. But this floor, I ran into the problem with the carpet, so... I can't do the floors. I have to hire out to do the floors. Yeah. I got to pull yeah. the carpets up this weekend. We figured that'd be the last thing. Pull the carpets up and just remember that little pink buffer my head. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I I still have it. Right. <laughs> I found it oh. at the shop, and okay. I said, "Holy crap! All we got to do is buff the floors because there's solid wood floors under the rug." Right. Not a you know nope. just a rookie mistake. Because the pads are stapled down that are underneath the rug. So there's staples all over the floor. And then what holds the rug down is, you know, and I knew this, that the nail plates all around mm-hmm. all the walls. They're all right. going to be pulled up. Yep. The hallway doesn't match that the hallway is worn. So we got to have somebody strip it right down and then re redo it. Oh. So that's Probably well, three or four grand. So it'd be. Well, what we'll do anyway. is we'll take we'll take your mind off of all this. Matt has a series of prop bets that we can yep. go through for the Super Bowl because I mean, I mean, I mean, Matt's decided to risk the the entire college fund on the <laughs> on the game. The Super Bowl I'm, commercials. 
they're a riot this year. Oh, my gosh. That's good because the halftime show is going to blow, in my opinion. No, for sure. That's ridiculous. But we can't really I have a question there. about that <laughs> included in these prop hey, bets. By, by the on. way, one, one quick note on the side. This is for Matt. Do we have somebody uh, in our area turn 100 today? Uh, we have some. We well, actually, well, here's the story that I did. We have someone turning 110, 110. in our area. Her name's Esther Pardo of Northumberland on February 26th. All right, we, Esther. We did that story yesterday, but also uh, our yeah. own Mark Lawrence's papa yes. is turning 100 on Saturday. Yes, I'm that's why I brought it up. That yes. Mark's dad is going to be 100. I think yes. that's absolutely awesome. So a couple miles. Our nana was 102. So. Yes, she was 102 when she passed away. Yeah. 2009. Yeah. All right, we will take a break. Uh, we'll come back. Prop bets in a moment, as only we can do it on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Hmm. When car repairs get difficult. Well, I. I just don't know. Um, me neither. We get good. Sunbury Motors. More than quality new and used cars, Sunbury Motors specializes in complicated auto repair diagnosis. They can handle intricate repairs and even complete auto body with service open Monday through Friday, 7 till 4. And Sunbury Motors has made simple repairs easy. Maintaining your vehicle is necessary. Finding the time to do it is difficult. Welcome to Sunbury Motors Quick Lane. Open 7 till 4, Monday through Friday. Just walk in or call ahead. Relax in their remodeled waiting room with Wi-Fi, beverages, and snacks. Will Sunbury Motors factory train techs take care of your oil change, tire alignments, brakes, and inspections. Quick Lane, 6.30 to 6, Monday through Friday, Saturday, 6.30 30 till 2. Sunbury Motors, Ford and Hyundai, North 4th Street, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. We take the mm. out of auto repair. All right, here we go. Time to let it roll. Matt has a list. Okay, so we'll do the prop bets first, and then we'll do our game pick, MVP score, all that at the end. So let's start with the normal ones that we like to do. First, the coin toss, heads or tails, Steve. Is there a don't care category? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, tails, whatever. Tails. King, who do you got? Heads, for sure. Heads. I got inside info on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go heads, too. It seems to be happening more lately. I'm going heads. <laughs> Honestly, like all, all the kick off, all the uh, coin tosses I've seen lately, I've heard more heads. Like I normally am a tails guy, but I've heard more heads lately. But maybe that's just me. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I think you're right. Stop I'm it. going heads. I, there's no question about it. <laughs> all right. So. Now we go to the national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a national anthem time over there. Oh, good, great. Mickey Guyton. I never, I don't know who this is, but she's a country singer star. She's doing the national anthem, so we'll just pick how long she's going to go. King. Two minutes, ten seconds. All right, Steve. Hour 45. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you know, country singers tend to be a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna go 205 with mine. So what number is Harden gonna wear with the Sixers? He can't wear 13. No, um, I've been seeing 11, but I don't. No. I don't know if that's right. Because I can tell you right now, <laughs> Will Chamberlain, James Harden. Yeah, no. Yeah, they're no. not in the same category. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna happen. All right, just checking. All right, next one. I mentioned how we're all really looking forward to the halftime show of Eminem and Dr. Dre and every, every other rapper known to man. Snoop Dogg? Yeah, Snoop Dogg, him too. Yeah, all right. Um, so Martha I'm, Stewart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all the above. I would pay to see that, watch her get up there and dance, but whatever. Yeah, I think I'll still pass on that. Anyway. So, my question to you both is, how many brain cells will be lost during the halftime show? Let me start with Steve. Well, none, I'm, because I'm not going to watch it. 
King, how many brain cells are you going to lose while watching the halftime show? One, because I'm going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch it just because. So I, I can don't, but, I, but it. just so everybody knows, I don't watch halftime. So I, 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 I have not watched a halftime show at a Super Bowl in, I don't know, 25 years. Yeah, you're a party pooper. We know that. You miss Katy Perry? That was one of the greatest shows I've ever seen. She was I was a so good one. I love Katy Perry. I was so, a good one. So I made this was sandwich that was so good. around on that swing. Jeez. I, I, I made this sand, sandwich that was so good that night. Um, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Major eye candy. Go ahead. Yeah. My favorite was the Who, Saints, Colts. That was my favorite. That was great. Who? 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 All right. Uh, I'm, I'm going with 10 because I'll, I'll probably have to check it out a little bit just to see it. You know, it, it's like it's like when you get, if you get a root canal. I haven't done this yet, but I just go from per, from stories I've heard. You still Not suck. You still <laughs> suck hole stuck air in it to, in the hole to see if it still hurts. Like that's what that's huh. how I feel about this. Anyway, it's awful. Yeah. I think you're right. So uh, I, I just I, I don't like what they're doing with all this stuff. They're just forcing it on people. All right. So. so speaking of betting, our buddy Al Michaels loves talking about the point spreads and and the betting into his broadcast here and there. So how many times is he going to mention that during the broadcast on Sunday? I'm I'm going to say two. Steve, three, okay. six. six. All right. All right, now we're going to claiming seven billion dollars. It's going to be gambled this weekend on yeah. that game. Three point one million, I think the number it's one. Also, third, yeah, it's also his last NBC broadcast, so he doesn't care. Correct, exactly yeah. right. So now we'll get to some football stuff. Actual, how many pick sixes, if any, will Matt Stafford throw, King? One. Okay, Steve. None. I'm going to go with none as well. I think it's a clean game for both quarterbacks. All right, next one. This is Steve's favorite one. How many times will Aaron Donald be shown on the broadcast on Sunday, Steve? Uh, 217. (laughs) King? Realistically, probably 15. Isolation, just showing him. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick I'm gonna go with uh I'm gonna go with seven. Seven? Yeah. It's Chris Collinsworth doing the game. He'll be broken down seven times in the first two series. True, but this but it's also his former team. So he's gonna be loving on them a lot too. So I, I think no, it might get no, evened no, out no, slightly. No, no, no. What? In the last okay. game, they what? didn't call what? his name what? for half the game. No I'm kidding, because he wasn't well. playing well. Okay, you got to remember, what does he own? This is about money. What does he own? What does Chris oh, Collinsworth own? Pro Football Focus, yes, right. Who's oh, the Collins number one Ford. player in Pro Football Focus? It's Aaron Donald. Yeah, that's true. Okay, All right. don't give me this seven. They'll do it t- seven times in the first two series because right. they're trying to sell subscriptions. I'll meet you at ten. Right there. We'll go with that one. <laughs> ten? That's the first half. <laughs> All right, next. Before the Star Spangled Banner. (laughs) Oh, no, he'll be on during that, too. In fact, in fact, Collinsworth's going to break it down with a telestrator during the national anthem. (laughs) That's as bad as PFF actually is. I mean, and by the way, just so everybody understands, I think Collinsworth is really, really good. Please. So don't oh, I think, think he's great. I think, I think him he's and Troy really, are the best. Tony I Romo think, is a waste of time. Oh. I, I think I think Collinsworth is really, really good. I yeah. just don't like the overkill on Aaron Donald. I think PFF and, stinks. And, and, and I think Aaron Donald's ex I think Aaron Donald's outstanding. But yeah. I can't have him routinely blocked on every replay and, and convince me that something special is happening. There you go. All right, so speaking of that Rams defensive line, how many sacks in the game? Everyone's talking about their D-line versus the bad Cincinnati O-line king. I think they'll get to him three times. I got five. I'm going four. All right, yep. there we go. Now, finally... For me, I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. This is kind of leading into my prediction a little bit, but you have a lot. You have both two high-powered offenses. So my question is, how many punts, if any, will we see in this game, Steve? Hmm. Oh, uh, we'll see four punts. 
four. Four okay. punts, and a, and a fifth one will be a fake by Johnny Hester. Ooh, okay. I like it. King. Three each. I think a lot of nerves are going to come into play, obviously. Okay. Three each. I am going to go with uh, five. See, I think total. one. I think yes. five Johnny each. Hecker. Five total. Johnny Hecker is outstanding, and the Rams are yeah. with, with Fossil as a special teams coach at fakes on punts. And I think they're going to run one in this game. Okay. I can see it. Well, somebody had to come up with something different besides, you know, what you got. <laughs> all right. Now the moment we've all been waiting for. Game pick, MVP, final score. Steve. Aaron Donald. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Rams. Uh, Cooper Cup. 31 to 31 to 24. King. Joe Burrow, Cincinnati, 31 to 24. <laughs> All right. I'm going high scoring as well. I'm going Cincinnati as well. This team reminds me of the Eagles in 17. They're going to find a way to get it done. And my MVP, as I think, is the guy that's going to catch the game winning touchdown, Chase. Jamar Chase. Yeah. To me, he is he was the my second pick, yeah. to me he is the X factor of this game. I think he's going to toast Jalen Ramsey all I day would long. I love that. That was Ramsey's the only douche. I can't. Whatever. I, I got to give Ramsey credit. I mean, in a, an era where the ball's thrown a lot, he still has 17 fewer interceptions than Jack Ham. <laughs> there you go. And 30 to 27 since 30 to 27 Cincinnati. Yeah, my only problem w- with with picking the Bengals is I, they're, they're, the weakest unit on the field is the Bengals' offensive line. The strongest right. unit is the Rams' defensive line. It's just not right. That's why I'm going with the Rams. No, a lot of people have said that. I, I'm going with the fact that this is the biggest game of these guys' lives. And, but the problem the Rams have is all the pressure's on them. I no, mean, they is. have no to doubt. Win. They were no doubt to win. Cincinnati's yep. like, this is cool, man. And <laughs> we'll be back next year. Where the Rams <laughs> are probably to break up. And OBJ, whatever his name is, come on, man.